So we have another question here from Zach. It says, I've noticed it doesn't seem difficult for the betrayer to want to be intimate, especially since they've just been forgiven. But how does the betrayed feel attracted to their spouse again? Yeah, this is a real issue because intimacy oftentimes is a struggle I'm gonna leave that up because hmm? I'm going to leave that up for a little oh, okay. bit. Oh, OK. It's a struggle uh, because guess what? You've just taken advantage of our relationship. You've betrayed it. And now I have all types of feelings and emotions attached to our sexuality. And, you know, we've talked about how some people go into sexual overdrive because of a betrayed spouse. You know, now they're competing with the affair partner. So now they want to outperform what that affair partner did. And they're using intimacy or sex as a way to feel uh, sexy, to feel worthy, to feel wanted, to feel desired. And so they are having it every day, several times a day and they're using it as a tool now it's short-lived because it's first of all that's not long lasting mm -hmm. so and, and once you go through that phase then you may slip into an asexual relationship where you don't want it at all you you're so disgusted by your partner and what he or she did that you can't even think about him touching you you touching him whatever the case may be and then you transition into another phase where you're engaging again but it's so emotional you're this, this emotional fragility is taking place you're weeping during the act you need to stop you need to pause you're triggered is this what you like with her is this what you've experienced so it's a you're dealing with all of these triggers and emotions and really your focus has to be your personal healing because when you're in a hurt place no matter yes. what you do the experience is going to be hurtful but when you're healing and you become whole and complete any experience that you have is going to come across extremely different yeah, and i'm a big proponent of doing the, uh a sex fast and you can do a seven day which you know seven days not really that much and may not have that huge impact when there's been infidelity we like a 30 day sex fast and what that does because of the fact that you're in this heightened state of emotions and you are emotionally triggered and um, going through what we like to say, uh, PISD, post infidelity stress disorder. Um, you know, it's very difficult to control the thoughts of your mind, and your body will involuntarily shut down on you where you cannot feel physically aroused. You do not have this emotional connection anymore. You just feel hurt and you just feel pain. And if you compound that with images and thoughts and things of that nature, it's really it's really a lot to handle. And we always say sex without in, uh, without intimacy feels like rape anyway. So what this 30 day sex fast does, it allows you to take sex off the table, physically connecting in that way, and instead focusing on intimacy. And at that time, that's all you need is intimacy, you know, being able to look at each other in the eyes, learning how to do that again, because after an infidelity, there's a tremendous amount of shame. You can't look at each other. A lot of times you can't touch each other or hold hands anymore. Hugs feel weird. That's the stuff that you want to begin to work on for those 30 days. And when you take sex off the table, it's not even on the mind. You know that you can get as intimate as you want to and you don't have to go there. It actually allows you to reconnect in a way that you wouldn't be able to if you feel the obligation of having sex. And that's something that you don't decide on your own. You actually sit down with your spouse and discuss what you're going through and how you think that this process would really help you. And that's something that we help our couples do as well. And also for the one who was unfaithful he or she has to be sensitive to where you are at, right? <clears throat> when they begin to understand the individual journey that you're going on and how much sex is a trigger, uh, they should have a, uh, I don't know, an awareness and they should be able to accommodate that. And uh, at the end of the day, the, betray the, the unfaithful partner cannot control the betrayed spouse's uh, recovery process what the timeline should be everybody's uh, completely different but the key is if you are the betrayed spouse you want to be getting help they say it takes upwards of two years to heal but that's if you're getting help if you're not getting help and you're just trying to do it on your own it can be a lot longer so don't don't sit in the pit of your pain do something about it to get out of it